Okay, Sarah Wallace, uh, we're going to do a review of your website now. So um, your website is, let's see, the address is alphaprepacademy.org. Let's take a look. Okay, so uh, you got a, a 66 out of 100. Um, so obviously um, there's some room for improvement here. So let's take a look at what, what, where we can improve. So if you look at the top, of uh, of the, the the page here, uh, performance is 21 out of 30, mobile is 30 out of 30, SEO is 5 out of 30, and security is 10 out of 10. So um, it looks like the big the big hit here is is on SEO. Um, so let's uh, let's jump down to SEO. Um, I would say performance is you know good enough. Um, well, you don't have browser caching. Um, it's something that would help uh, for sure. But um, but the big the big glaring issue is you're getting a five out of thirty on search engine optimization. So what's what is that stuff? Let's let's break it down a little bit. Um, so SEO stands for search engine optimization, and um, and I like to just always when I talk about SEO, I like to add the caveat that it may or may not be relevant or important. Um, you uh, not not every school is uh, is going to benefit from optimizing their website for search engines. Um, so um, if you would, uh, meaning if uh, a professional um, search engine optimization specialist, uh, you know, did a um, I guess uh, what we call like keyword research or uh, an audit um, to look at the search traffic. Uh, in your area and did determine that there's a lot of search traffic, relevant search traffic for your school. And this really stands for any business, but like obviously we're talking about this school here. So um, if, you know, so, so what do I mean by relevant search traffic? Um, I'll unpack that a little bit. So basically um, think of, uh, think of a billboard. Right, so that's the analogy I always use. Um, you're driving down the street, you see a big billboard on the street, a big ad for a business. So uh, obviously, um, billboards uh, are only as good um, uh, as as uh, as busy the street is, right? So like, if there's no traffic on that street, then that billboard uh, doesn't doesn't offer you any marketing value. People have to be driving by it, right? Um, so, so if people aren't searching for uh, keywords that are relevant to your business, like you know preschools in such and such city, uh, I think you guys are in Snellville, you know, uh, childcare in Snellville, whatever you wherever you are. If people aren't searching for it, and, and there's many, you know, many combinations, and, and, and you know, so people that know what they're doing know how to find out if there is uh, enough search volume to make it worthwhile investing. Uh, what, what I'll tell you is, we find, we found over the years that uh, most of the time, um, it's searches is, is just not um, relevant. So. Uh, there, there's, we've tried to find search traffic for a school that, you know, they wanted to pay us to do search engine optimization uh, on their website, but um, we, we told them we wouldn't because we didn't think that would be of any value to them to invest in. So, so let's just say you did that. So what, what would you do to your website? So um, once you've determined that, yeah, there's search volume, we, you know, it does make sense to invest in search engine optimization, um, then, then what you want to do is make sure that the keywords that you have discovered are getting a lot of search traffic. You want to make sure that your website and your web pages are optimized to be found um, on searches for those keywords. You want to be ideally at the, the top of the page when someone types in preschools in Snellville, uh, you want to be the first site organically, so so you uh, so so let's just say preschools in Snellville is the keyword phrase that you're optimizing for. So you'd want it to be in the page title, 
and you'd want it, that to be in the meta description. It would need to be in the heading of, of the page and the sitemap. So um, two of these things are uh, uh, for people to consume, and two of them are for Google to consume or the search engines, okay? So the page title and the headings, that's what people see, right? So Google's looking for, you know, want to make sure that uh, that keyword, uh, that relevant keyword is found in places that make sense on the page so that when one of their users that's searching in the, in Google finds the page, it's, it's there and they're finding what they're looking for. Um, but the meta description and the sitemap, those are things that just Google sees. Um, so Google's uh, taking a look at, you know, tags and things that are under the surface, you know, not what the humans are seeing, but um, they're, uh, they're there that Google can crawl through all those pages and index them and see that it's there. Um, also, the sitemap makes it easy for Google to uh, direct the traffic there. So you want to have those things in place. Right now, you don't. So it could be that you've already paid a professional and, and that professional has determined that, you know what, it's not worth it to invest in SEO. It's very likely that that could be the case. We have found that many times, and that's why we actually don't offer search engine optimization services anymore. Uh, we focus on just offering Facebook ads because we have realized that Facebook ads are really the one and only place that makes sense for schools to invest for, uh, for advertising um, because they perform the best um, and consistently and all year round rather than uh, rather than even, you know, Google ads can work. They're hit or miss. Uh, Google ads and search engine optimization are um, tightly linked, but different strategies. Um, a good way to figure out what keywords do work is to actually run Google ads um, and, you know, sort of prove and test what keywords you want to be optimized for. But of course, first and foremost, you want to make sure that people are actually searching because Google ads are Google ads and search engine optimization, again, are only as good as there is traffic coming to those search, those keywords, those keyword searches. Okay, moving on. You got 10 out of 10 on security, so that's good. Um, that means you've got encryption on all your on, on all your pages, and that also helps. Um, so so we'll, so let's jump into your website. Let's take a look. Okay, so here is your your website, and um, and so so the thing that I always look for when I when I land on someone's website is is there one big call to action, one big goal that is like unmistakably like in my face that I I couldn't possibly miss. So you. You have a call to action here, over here on the bottom left of this big, what we call a hero image, okay? So, and it's sliding through different images. Um, you know, th this, uh, okay, so I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off on some tangents here, but um, I wanna say that, you know, scrolling images, um, while it's like a cool feature, it uh, is not, helpful to you there's 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 you know um you, what you want to do is you want to find the one image that uh you know performs the best for that page as far as generating inquiries from your ideal targets um, there is no value in having more images scroll scroll through these things now this is something that so many websites have because so many wordpress templates do it um, it became a trend and it's one of those things that like you know every good web designer you know cringes <laughs> when they see that 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 thing because it's it's of no it's of no benefit it it doesn't it doesn't make your site better it actually it actually hurts you so what i would strongly suggest is um pick one image and pick that by testing what works best or what not. And I can talk about how you do that testing. But, but ultimately, like maybe this one with the, with the baby, you know, it's a beautiful image. Obviously, high quality photography generally does better. Um, but um, so that's that's one thing. Now, um, so what are some of the reasons why I say that? So let, let's just take a look at your big call to action here, which is could be a little bit bigger and a little bit more visible. Right now, this this orange schedule a visit button. 
well, it's kind of a, a ribbon. Um, depending on the image that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that's behind it, that button is more or less visible, right? So here it's pretty visible. Here uh, it's a little bit, it's getting a little bit buried. You know, I think one of these other images is like really buried and it's really, there's like little contrast. This one's not so great. There's this big image, this big orange thing right underneath the orange button leading up to it. It's not really clear, right? It's not, right? You want that that big button, that big call to action. That needs to be the, uh, the most uh, eye-catching uh, button possible. So you want it to be contrasting with anything that's around it in its immediate uh, zone and ideally on the page. It'd be good if it's a if it's a very bold color that is not found anywhere else on the page. And and uh, you know because again you got some these are all pretty much nice images, right? They're all good images. But the thing is is that those images are not the point of this of this page, right? The the goal of this page is to get obviously a uh, prospective parent to schedule a visit, to click on this link, not to make somebody fall in love with these beautiful blue eyes, but it's to it's to actually get parents to take that action. So um, also I would say that, you know, this color text on, on these different images is again, hard, harder to read um, on some images and not harder, uh, it's easier to read on others. So I'd really, again, just like this one is probably the best one as far as optimizing for this button and this text. So you can read it right here. It's a nice gray white background. This one's okay too, but in any event, um, think something that I pretty much say with every single one of these website reviews is to get rid of this big navigation at the top and um, ideally just get rid of it altogether. But if, uh, you know, one quick fix is you can quickly just drop it down to the footer so it's not, it's not uh, taking the user's um, attention away and sending them on a wild goose chase around your site, which makes them less likely to schedule a tour. Um, so, uh, so I would say just uh, my own opinion is pick the one image that works best with this with this text, and um, and you know ideally make this button I would say a little bit bigger and you know, uh, maybe just right in the middle, you know. Um, so maybe give it another color, make it pop a little more, but make it super obvious. You want you want the design to lead the eye into that call to action. Um, and so being off to the side is, is less uh, less ideal for that. Mind you, if, if we make this, uh, if, if we squeeze this down, then it become, it does, actually that's a lot better. So this mobile view, if you take a look at this mobile view, that, we actually see um, see how you've you've now got this uh, white translucent background behind the text, um, and and then the button is a little more visible. Although I'd like to give it a little bit more margin, um, you know, so a little more space and airy. Uh, maybe drop this down a little bit on the mobile design. Um, but the, definitely the mobile view is better, and you know the menu. That navigation is is hidden up here in this uh, in this menu up on the top left, so it's less again it's less distracting. So um, the good news is is that most traffic today comes from mobile, so your website is definitely looking the, the design is is better optimized for conversions on on a mobile phone. So I would try to I would try to keep consistency on that, so that when it when it uh, when it is viewed on a desktop, you don't lose those benefits, and the call to action doesn't get buried a little bit like it does currently, and pushed off to the off to the side. Um, our programs. So um, I'm assuming these link to things, and I would actually say these should not link. Uh, again, you don't. If, if you want people to, uh, the ideal thing to do on these landing pages, as we've seen from testing, you know, hundreds of them at this point, is that. You don't want to, you want to be giving enough information about your programs so that it gets the parents to, to understand what you what you offer, but uh, requires them to book a tour, come in for a tour to uh, learn more about them. So you don't want to give it all away um, and you don't want them to need to, to navigate around the site to get more information because that distracts them that takes them away from leading towards that that tour booking um, 
so these are all linking these are all you know uh, linked so I'm assuming they're going to go to a page let's just prove my theory um, yeah so goes to a page here that doesn't have a clear call to action at the top it's got a lot of information too much information join the newsletter uh, it's a competing you know goal of the page so so look what happened you were on a page over here that at least had a pretty clear call to action um, and uh, Right, depending you know depending on what image they're looking at it's, it's going to be easy to see now if they go down here and they click to us a, a page you, you you lost that now they're on a page where uh, okay there's there is more information but but again this information is probably better off um, either what I always tell people is like if if it can't all be on one page then then it's too much right if it's too much information for one well-designed landing page then then that's the indication that you've got too much and you have to you have to pair it back a bit and you have to make sure that you know you're incentivizing this uh this prospective parent uh to uh, schedule a tour to learn more um all right uh next let's go down a little bit more about us i mean all this stuff is fine you got some more call to actions contact us and roll now i don't understand why you've got two different call to actions it's like enroll now can somebody actually enroll from the website that seems a little strange let's see what happens when we do that i'll click on that link so yeah, this isn't very, this is really unclear, right? So it's like enroll now. So now I come to this page and it's not telling me what to do. It's just got a very sparse list and, and, and other links like registration, but it's not telling me like, this is the next step, do this next. Um, I'm assuming people need to come in to meet you before you want them to enroll. I'm not, I mean, school, most every schools can work in different ways. Um, I would say every school I've ever worked with wants to meet a parent before they accept them. So obviously you're not going to let them just pay for tuition and show up and, you know, have, be committed to allowing that child in your school before you've even meet, met them face to face. So obviously the next step has to be scheduling a tour, meeting you in person. And so um, I would say slow down uh, on, on these, like contact us makes sense, but, but I don't know why you'd want schedule a visit. I mean, schedule a visit is a good call to action. Book a tour, schedule a tour, schedule a visit. Um, that's that's a good call to action. Contact us. Eh, it's okay, but obviously you should. I think you should be consistent. Uh, the page should have one main call to action, um, and not anything competing and not nothing that's confusing. It's like, well, if I schedule a tour, is that different than clicking contact us? um it probably is let's see let's click on it okay so now you've got their phone number and again you're taking them away from the the most important goal which is scheduling a tour um so let's see what happens when you click schedule a tour let's take a look schedule a visit i mean schedule a visit oh it goes to the contact us page okay so yeah um scheduling a visit so i mean if that's the only way you have uh, to right now currently schedule a visit, I would suggest having right on that link a, a calendar that pops up that allows them to schedule a tour right then and there um, without having to actually call you or what have you. Uh, that, that would be my suggestion. Um, that's what we see works really well. Um, you know, I, just in general, I think, um, you know, our opinion here at Hubbly is that um, you have a lot of parents that deserve your time. Um, you've got parents paying tuition. You've got you've got children, of course, there that you're that you're educating, and you have staff, and you have a whole lot of people that do, that deserve your time without question. Um, fielding phone calls and chasing after parents that are maybe not serious, maybe not a good fit, maybe not you know willing to commit to coming in for a tour, um, isn't necessarily fair. Uh, a fair use of your time considering you have very limited time uh, as it is and you've got a whole bunch of people that are already paying you for you for your time so to speak so so we really think that you know number one get a really strong enrollment campaign going so that you have a lot of tours being booked and really only give your time to parents that are actually scheduling a tour and 
beyond that, showing up and, and, and showing that they're committed to actually coming in and uh, that they're serious enough to even to show up. Because once they show up, you know that they, well, they do deserve your time. It's not like parents that, that aren't yet ready to commit or are serious, they're not bad people. They just don't deserve your time. Um, so, you know, there's other ways of giving them information or, you know, um, uh, sending them things automatically rather than rather than you spending your limited time calling them chasing after them I mean people don't want phone calls anyways and when they do call they only they always everybody knows they always ask the same few questions and those are questions that really shouldn't be answered over the phone what's your tuition tell me this tell me that you're going to get the same kind of few questions all the time and those are generally questions that are like decision making questions and what we find is like when it, when a parent calls and says uh what, what you know how much is your tuition well you know it's it's really it's really not uh it's it's not smart to to give them tuition information over the phone i mean most people do it because you're just doing whatever the parent asks for but that's not really uh, helpful to you because parents can't dis can't really appreciate the value of your tuition over the phone before they have actually come in and seen your environment, met you, see the kids there, right? That they need to come in and have that tour experience before they're actually uh, able to to consider that your like consider if your tuition is 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 uh, is is a is a good price or or not or you know so all you really have to do is you know when somebody calls and says you know what's your tuition. I say, well, we'd love to meet you. You know, we, we talk tuition face to face with people. Um, you know, we, we treat every family, um, you know, based on their needs, you know, whatever it is. Some schools offer subsidies. You know, there, there, there's many ways to to explain why if they want an exact understanding of tuition, they need to come in and, and see it. I mean, I, I say the same thing to people all the time that are interested uh interested in, in using our enrollment services. So we have a, uh, Hubbly offers a hands-free enrollment marketing solution for, uh, for, for private schools. And uh, schools schedule demos with me every day, all day. And sometimes they say like, you know, I really just want to understand what your prices are. And I tell them I'm happy to break down our prices for you after we do a demo because I want to make sure that you know what we do so that you understand what the prices are for and if they're good or not, you know, like um, if, if they're worth it, you know, because $5 for, you know, um, $5 is, is too much for, um, you know, for, uh, for a coffee. Um, and sometimes it's a good price for a coffee. You know what I mean? Like it depends, right? I mean, maybe $5 is never a good price for a coffee, but I probably pay five dollars for way too many coffees. So in any event, it depends, right? So like this coffee is a you know a Amer triple americano with you know all these fancy words, you know, and and this other coffee is just drip coffee from from uh, the mechanic shop down the street. Like those two coffees, if being for five dollars, obviously you'd rather pay five dollars for that fancy Starbucks coffee rather than the the mechanic's coffee in a white styrofoam cup. So. Um, so obviously, uh, the the value of your tuition can't be understood from your website, from a phone call, from an email. The parent has to come in with their full body and their and their attention and have a full five cents five cents experience. They have to look at it, smell it, touch it, see it, hear it, all these things, right? So, so that's that that's why you, the purpose of your website is just one thing, one thing, and one thing only. And that is to get the right prospective parents to schedule a tour and then show up for the tour. So your website is to get the tour scheduled. And then you want to ideally have some automation uh, tools that allow, you know, you know, lead those parents to actually show up for, to the tour without you having to do that stuff manually because those kind of emails from the point of scheduling an inquiry or scheduling a tour until they show up, all that stuff is should be standardized and, and automated. Okay, so so that's my review of the site here. Um, I would say that, uh, um, you know, uh, again, just a quick review. You want to pick one of these images. I would say get that, that, that call to action to be more similar to how it is on uh, on the on the mobile display like this. Um, even on the mobile display, I would make some updates and give that button a little more space uh, above and below it, and also maybe give it a different color. I feel like this color 
Um, while orange is actually often, it's a very popular color for a call to action button, uh, because of the color palette of the site, it's not popping out as much as it could, right? So like, you know, if you had more of a blue site, orange would really pop. So I would, I would try to find a, a color that um, is a little bit more in contrast, not, not really part of the same sort of palette. Uh, find something that really, really sticks out more. Obviously pick one that looks nice, but um, it, it's not about, it, it, you know, again, when, when parents come in and they enroll at your school, um, they don't care about, you know, when a parent comes into your school, does a tour and says, wow, this is like the perfect place for my kids. I'm absolutely enrolling my child here. Um, they don't really care what your color, what, the, what colors you pick for your branding on your website, right? That doesn't really play a role here whatsoever. Um, so you want to just make sure that your website is designed uh, for the goal of the website rather than like, you know, worried about branding or color choices. They're totally inconsequential in regards to how you are going to grow your business. Your logo um, doesn't play a role in, in parents making a decision to enroll their child, as long as you're just not offending anybody. So that's really in regards to branding uh, and, and focusing on your color choices and branding and your logo and your name and all that stuff. Bottom line is the only bar you have to meet is don't offend anybody. Look professional. Don't look like it was done by a five-year-old and uh, make it look as, as current as possible and just don't offend people. That's really all you have to, it's a pretty low bar as far as what you have to meet as far as branding goes. Um, okay, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, if anybody wants to, uh, um, if anybody wants to, to learn more about our services here at Hubley, um, you can always just contact uh, contact us, uh, contact me, Jono, J-O-N-O, at hubbly.com and I'll you know send you some information and um, yeah so uh, I hope this was helpful to to, to uh, the Alpha Preparatory Academy and um, and anybody else that watched it and if you have any other questions just post them in the thread um, for this uh, for this post and uh, be happy to answer it and please uh, submit submit more websites for me to do reviews I'm happy to do it also submit ads that you have submit hey, submit an email follow-up that you might have. I'm happy to break down anything. So websites, uh, ads, um, emails, newsletters, whatever you got, I'm happy to, to analyze it, break it down, give you some, give you some tips um, from, uh, that we're learning from the best practices of, you know, um, of running campaigns for schools all across the U.S. and Canada. And now even abroad, we've got, we're running campaigns for schools in Australia and South Africa. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, now we've got a school in, in the Dominican and, um, interestingly, parents and schools are remarkably consistent around the world. So, um, pretty, pretty neat stuff. Um, that's what, that's what I like to nerd out on for some reason. So thanks again for your attention. If you want to reach out to me, Jono, J-O-N-O at hubbly.com and, uh, have a wonderful day, everybody.